to this new ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Billy Trude, and welcome back to Fallout 3, the Point Lookout Level 1 Naked Run. Well, last time, we did a pretty good job getting ourselves set up with some basic weapons and armour. And then I decided I was just going to sneak into the swamp, which is a terrible idea. A terrible idea because, you know, I have stealth boys. This here is a reminder of why I actually bothered collecting up the stealth boys. So we could just sneak through the swamp without any trouble. So, uh, you, my friend, we can just leave be. All we're supposed to be doing is sneaking straight through this area, giving them a wide berth. If we see actual swamp ghouls, they're not so bad. In fact, actually, they're the flimsiest of all ghouls. They've actually got less health than, like, any other type. And here we go, we've made it to water. That's good. We want to be at water because water means a secret entrance. You see, the fun thing about the secret entrance into this camp is uh, it's not a map marker. You can't find it with the compass, and it's pretty well disguised among all of these trees. You want to know where it is, you've got to go finding it. These here coffins uh, are a good way of starting off the search. When you find the coffins, uh, basically uh, head west, and uh, you can check your local map as well. The local map will show it as a door. It's somewhere around here. Possibly it's on this island. It's somewhere close by to here anyway. There's something bad over there, by the way. I think it might be a bit further... A bit further south than where I am. Nope, there we go. Septic tunnel access. I was on the right island. Okay, on the local map it will show up. But yeah, it's hidden behind uh, this here bush. Not easy to spot among all this here brush. And yeah, there's first aid boxes all over the place here, so uh, wouldn't hurt to do a bit of Radex just for safety. Keep your shotgun ready though, even though we're about to bypass a very large amount of the actual camp, there's still going to be a handful of ghouls inside the morgue, which is what we're breaking into. But they're not in here, so I don't know why I'm creeping. I know there's nothing in here, but yeah, we're about to be in a bit of trouble. Just get through here and prepare, because they're going to be right in front of me. Swamp ghoul, swamp ghoul. That's good. Swamp ghouls, as I say, are the flimsiest of all ghouls. They are no problem whatsoever. So one goes down. Next one comes in. Just get right up to you because, yes, they do a very convenient roar. And then headshot. Down they go. Swamp ghouls are nothing. Stealth boy wears off. Grab myself a handful of caps and level up. Bloody convenient timing. Right. Guns. Let's get guns up a bit. This shotgun needs to be more powerful. Sneak. That definitely wouldn't hurt either. Unless, of course, I'd rather have uh, repair. You know what? The shotgun burns down quickly. Let's get repair up to 50 to match lockpick 50. That'll do. You know, I wouldn't normally even consider the perks that just give you more skill points. But, on this occasion, I wouldn't say no. Or, intense training, more endurance. That might not be a bad idea, to be honest. Hmm, Black Widow, 10%. Sorry, I thought it was 5. No, 10% against male. I'm pretty sure Swamp Folk are male. They're clearly gendered as male. They've got male voices. Yeah, I'm going to take Black Widow. We need every advantage we've got against those bastards in the swamp. So now we're in the morgue. We can just rob the place dry, and I believe it is... Hang on, it's somewhere around here. Shen May... Yang Wan, that's the one. So, remove self-destruct codes. Job done. Next stage of the mission, complete. Obviously, ransack for every bit of medical we can, because there's a lot of medical stuff in here, despite the fact it's a morgue, so anyone that arrives, you know, it's a bit late to be doing medicine on them, but whatever. And now we just hope we get lucky, because, if I'm really lucky... I might be able to immediately fast travel away and we can just basically say, screw this business. Get rid of that and, uh, yeah, sub recovery site because the sub is understandably underwater. And I did indeed get the fast travel. Good, I was far enough away uh, from any other source of trouble. This is good. That went pretty well, aside from the fact I had to burn two whole stealth boys uh, to make it happen. So actually it was incredibly scruffy, but screw it, it'll do. Oh, we got trouble though. I was just heading down towards where I want to jump off. We've got ourselves a... What is that? A tracker? A bruiser? A squelcher? They've got very similar names. I get them confused. But it looks to me like he's holding an axe. 
been in. Yeah, just look at that. He's got so much health. These guys have got like, I think, 400 hit points. But no gun, which is good. Still don't want to mess with him, though. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to take a swim instead. We got ourselves, yeah, our target over there. May as well just swim directly there because these guys do not have swimming animations. They can't follow you into water. I mean, I am, if you'd pardon the pun, swimming in Radex right now. And yeah, water is actually relatively generous in terms of the rads it provides in this game. So uh, I can just basically just, yeah, work around this guy. Not much you can really do to me. And the amount of rads I'm picking up is uh, basically nothing. Rad away is everywhere. So we'll just skirt around the outside of this business. Make our way straight to the sub, which is pretty much underneath that boat there. Just to help you locate it. Are you actually angry at me, by the way? You don't seem to be good. There we go. Okay, make this happen quickly. Because, you know, rads inside the nuclear sub are understandable. But before we actually do any of that, may as well just, you know, uh, ransack the place a bit. One foot locker. I will never say no to 44 XP off the lock picking. Especially as a good amount of stuff here. Metal armor. Not great, to be honest. Metal helmet. I've got the motorcycle hammer. That's better. Power fist. That's good, actually. I'm glad they take that. And that's worth selling at the bare minimum. Those two, uh, not so much. Take some... No, I was going for the whiskey, but whatever. Okay, I think that's about all your stuff here. This is a very small area. So, uh, take that. Take another stealth boy. They are all over the place here. What we need to do now is just initiate self-destruct. And first, we have to confirm it by pulling the failsafe lever back here. So, grab that. Confirm, obviously, time to go. And just swim away from the submarine. You have to be really right next to it to get caught in the explosion. So don't worry too much about that. And if we're lucky, we might be able to get the... Can we see the... Oh! No, I was trying to get to the right angle where you can see under the water. It's gone anyway. The point is, it's no longer there. Mission complete. And yes, indeed, I can nip straight back to the hotel. Because, of course, mission complete means I can say hello to the terminal in the room. Because something, something, my spy satellite has detected the submarine has been destroyed, therefore an automated system has diddly diddly d. And we're given the evacuation code. One, three, two, three, four, four, two, Seraphim descending. I do like this quest because it actually feels spy-like. You have to, you know, break into a camp and there's a secret back entrance you can use. There's passcodes you have to play. There's a bit of thinking involved. It actually feels like a spy quest. It's one of my favourite quests in Fallout 3, actually. Love this quest. It's brilliant. And unfortunately, we already went up to the mansion, so we can fast travel straight up there. Save myself a little bit of time. And well, that's a bit of a dangerous place to spawn. <laughs> they wander through this area. Don't go into the mansion. We're not doing that just yet. No, no, no. Though I might need to actually loop around the outside because, sorry, didn't realise you could actually cut through that fence there. Here we go. With the chromatic spectacles, you can see that there are marks smeared on these vases. That if we just actually take the spectacles off for a second, uh, disappear. They're only visible with the actual marks, which is really cool. That's really, really cool indeed. Uh, there is, however, one small problem, which is uh, they're not actually on the vase. Presumably there was no way to make that work in the engine. Instead, they're a separate asset floating in midair. So when you activate the pedestal to begin actually entering the sequence, this happens. You can see there that the paint is clearly still hovering in the same area. So, <laughs> yes, that's that's just the thing. Uh, two, three, four, and then four again. It's so weird. It's so bloody weird. And then two should open up the secret bunker. Now, I'm aware you can absolutely glitch this quest so easily. There are multiple different ways you can get into the bunker without doing the rest of the quest. I don't like breaking the game like that, damn it. I want to do this properly. And straight down over here. Hello, Mr. Robot. And if we simply say Seraphim descending to him. Clearance acknowledged. Follow me for your extraction. Debriefing, comrade. It really does feel like a proper secret special mission because there's like, you know, multiple less security. Also, this is the real reward right here. 
all of the ammo in the cocking world. Oh, hang on, even more in the cabinet yet. We've got all sorts of bits and pieces here. Oh, this is lovely. This is just lovely. Ignore the sawn off. We don't need the sawn off right there. We've got ourselves a tool cabinet. Workman's overalls. Remember, we've got those. Uh, repair plus 10. We might be needing repair in a second. So just in case you need some repair, more 10 millimeter. Mini nukes. Rad X. Frag mine. Stealth boys. Uh, one sword. Can't remember how that is versus my power fist, actually. I think not as good. Oh yeah, nowhere near as good. Get rid of that business. Then again, sell it if we can. Then again, there's no one to sell it to. Could trade it, I suppose. We'll keep it if we can. But the big one, look at this. Chinese assault rifles. Really damn good solid weapon. In particular, of course, because in Fallout 3, because of damage resistance, automatic weapons are king if you can keep them going. And these ones are in really, really good condition. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. This is amazing. Can I repair up any of these? Can do a little bit of repairing, but I need to need to get some weight down here. Which is my best double-barreled shotgun that I can repair for another fifteen percent, like that. This is these I can repair together at least a little bit, but not too much. But what we actually need to do is just one moment. Grab any of this. Don't need that. Activate electrical switch. Open up this room, and uh, would you believe uh, there's something a bit suspicious in the room uh, with the grill? Uh, and the blood. And uh, more importantly, of course, we got ourselves uh, the backwater rifle. Uh, this is the unique variant of the lever action rifle. And to my mind, it is the best gun in the game. Now stop, I know what you're thinking. John, you're mad. The best gun in the game is Lincoln's Repeater. No, Lincoln's Repeater is the best gun at getting sneak attack criticals. The backwater rifle, however, gets more criticals in extended combat. Because the crit multiplier on Lincoln's Repeater is only times two. On a backwater rifle, it's times five. Sorry, I should explain the maths here. Basically, your character has a chance of getting a critical hit. That's determined primarily by luck and whether you've got the finesse perk yet, together with a handful of other very, very tiny things indeed. You multiply that percentage by the critical chance multiplier your weapon has. The backwater rifle has the joint highest multiplier in the game at times five. So right now, my character has luck of 10. That's 10% 10 chance of getting a critical. This thing is times five. So that's 50%. Every shot has a 50-50 chance of getting a crit. Except not precisely because condition also feeds into it, which is why, of course, we want to actually do this whole business with repair. So uh, that's now up to uh, 30 damage and, yeah, a really damn solid chance of getting a critical. This thing is uh, really, really damn nice. It's so good. And could I just actually just leave right now? <laughs> Do I actually need to get the uh, briefing? No, I wouldn't actually get the XP if I left right now. So I should actually, you know, listen to the briefing. The briefing, by the way, just says, uh, okay, in order for plausible deniability, something, 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 we're going to double cross you and gas you to death now. So that's unfortunate. Luckily, repair skill, we can just quickly disable the vent. This door is locked and you can't get out that way, so you need to climb out. But you can avoid taking damage because, yeah, you can just use repair 30 to block up the vent. This is what you might need the workman's coveralls for if your repair's not very good. That's why I think they're actually in this DLC. It's a nice, easy plus 10 right there. And if I can just avoid falling off pipes, I can just climb up to the top of the room and we can all be on our way. Here we go, up to the top of the room. You can just do this very easily without disabling the pipe, by the way. I just enjoy disabling the pipe. So, run off pipe. That leads us straight outside. Help myself to a giant pile of XP. Together with a couple of people who already tried to escape. Lovely. Is that enough for a level up, by the way? I assume not, otherwise I would have been told as much. We must be... Oh, so close. So flipping close. Like 20 XP off leveling up. And uh, this just leads out towards the sea. But I don't actually want to go that way. Because if I do, I may well run into some Maya Lurks. Instead, I'd say we just fast travel away. And yes, indeed. Uh, nice and hidden. Nice and safe. And now, uh, now we've got what we flipping need. Uh, we've got ourselves. Don't be wearing the hat anymore, by the way. I can actually put on something that's good for armor. Where's that motorcycle helmet? DR5. 5% damage reduction. Not bad. Not bad at all. Between those, we got 20% damage reduction. It's, you know, not spectacular, but it'll flip in do. 
We've now got ourselves uh, the Backwater Rifle. We've got ourselves a really damn good condition Chinese Assault Rifle. Can't repair that any further myself. That shotgun, that's starting to get somewhere too. So uh, we've got some good stuff. And uh, 15 mines. Okay, we are reasonably well armed at the minute. Okay, next on my list of things to do, I'd say would be money. Because, as I've said, there are very limited shops in this DLC. There's Madame Panada, there's Haley's Hardware, and then, of course, don't forget, there's Tobar himself. Okay, only 175 caps. Not great, to be honest. Okay, sold him some junk and some duplicates, almost at 600 caps. Greetings once again, young traveller. Do you have a need? You know, speaking to Bernarda, that just reminded me of a really fun fact about Point Lookout. So, basically, you know Bernarda and Catherine, the mother who actually tells you to find Nadine, and Nadine herself, and Margarita we haven't met yet, but she's got a very thick accent, and Marcella, who we actually met in the tent previously. So, basically, every single female-voiced character in this DLC, even though they all have very distinct voices, is voiced by the same voice actress. They just got in one person and she did literally all of the voice work for the female characters of Point Lookout. Very talented woman. She's up to 181 caps again, so... Okay, I'll sell you a mini nuke and some more missiles and railway spikes from Haley gets me to 836. Not enough, unfortunately. Second fun fact about the shopkeepers, by the way. So, um, Haley here on the shelf has a bunch of 10mm pistols, assault rifles, basic grenades. You know, good weapons from the base game. But, um, if you actually try and buy from him, he doesn't actually keep that in his inventory. He won't sell it to you. It's just on the shelf for show. So, yeah, if you just want some base game weapons, then just basically steal those. Because he refuses to sell them to you. Okay, I'm getting desperate here because I remembered, uh, yeah, I forgot one of the safes in town, uh, right in the bank. Now, if there's going to be a place where I find money, it's going to be in the bank. Not bad, 77 bottle caps. And a level up for that too, marvellous. Okay, I'm feeling at this point like what we want is uh, guns. Giant pile of guns. Honestly, is there anything I want more than guns? Not really, I mean... I could get lockpick up towards 70, but that feels uh, excessive. Take 5 into lockpick, just in case. Alright, get sneak up to 25, so it's a nice round number. Everything else, guns. Comprehension, not really worth doing. Educated, normally of course, a must pick at level 4, but how much more leveling up am I really going to be doing? And an extra 3, that's only like an extra 15% on top of what I already get. That's not even that much. I think I'd be better off going then again. That's just another 10%. That's maybe one level more by the end of this. So 20 more skill points. That's three more per level. So it depends mathematically whether I'm going to level up enough times to make educated worth it at all. Screw it, I can never resist educated. Okay, next thing. Not the mansion, but use the mansion as a bit of a... Jumping off point, because you may recall last time, uh, yes indeed, I picked up a beautiful, beautiful replacement bulb. So, uh, naturally, we need to actually screw that in to the lighthouse to make the lighthouse work. This is completely 100% pointless, but I don't consider Point Lookout complete until you've done it. I also can't remember who's guarding the lighthouse. I think some people spawn in to guard the lighthouse like later. But if you go to the lighthouse now, I think it's actually empty if you can get past the mile lurk. So, speaking of which, there's a mile lurk. Now, let's see how we do against you and... Okay, them being downhill from me, that doesn't flip and help actually. Ow! Excuse me, don't do that, you dick. Okay, I'm just going to shoot it at... Okay, just please naff off, naff off. There we go, face crippled. Yeah, if they're coming from downhill, that kind of doesn't really work for me actually. And... Bit of a waste of ammo, mind. But there you go, finally dead. These guys use up a lot of flipping ammo. And yeah, if they're coming from downhill, they do kind of screw you over a bit. Because it's just a bad angle to hit them in the eye, which is the only real bit you want to hit, but whatever. Yeah, I'm seeing no red on the compass at all. Then again, my perception is pretty poor. So I wouldn't necessarily see 
that much. Okay. We seem to be all quiet for now. Yep, all empty apart from your usual well-posed skeleton. So, I'd say we're in good shape. Take the moonshine, that's some good money. Step back outside again. Still no sign of trouble. Good, 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 good. So, uh, straight in over here. Activate lighthouse mechanism. And where's the button to turn it on? Here we go, beacon switch. And we have fixed the lighthouse. Kaboom. So now uh, there is a great big light that just cycles through the sky at night. As I say, it's totally flipping pointless, but I love it. While we're by the lighthouse though, there is one more place we need to visit, which is, uh, you may notice over there in the fog, uh, there's a shack on that island. And indeed there is, because uh, there's actually an unmarked location down over there. In fact, actually, it's rather important. Well, not exactly urgent, but it's definitely nice to go and visit. So, uh, grab myself some punga while I'm passing by, by the way. Local speciality, very useful. Eat it, your rads go down. It's like cave fungus. So, actually, it's pretty bloody useful. Right, pop a ranex, make our way over towards that island. And uh, you're going to want to do it by keeping this other island... Uh, between you and here, because you may notice there's a person uh, living on that island, and they work like Arkansas in the base game, which is uh, they'll basically shoot at you uh, as a scripted thing. So, oh, there we go. I'm just going to be uh, under the water, and I'm going to try and get their own island between me and them, and also the water and diddly diddly dee. Something's exploding. Hello, you're tossing a grenade, are you? Well, that's absolutely fine. Now you're taking a few more pot shots. Because, yeah, we want to get... Oh, okay, I was looking to get... Maybe we'll just actually uh, run. Get right up close and personal, because this person has got a very useful weapon. You don't really find very often a sniper rifle, in fact. So, shotgun. You just managed to get out of the way of that. Dear oh. Okay, that there, that happens on occasion. Fine, I guess we'll just shoot you with an assault rifle. See? That works too. There you go, sniper rifle. In fact, I believe like the only sniper rifle in the DLC. So uh, if you need yourself a scope, not a bad thing at all. Oh, and perfect timing. While I've been doing that, the day's ticked over and Madam Panada has spawned a bit more money. Good, that's precisely what I needed to see. Because all of that gets me to over a thousand caps, meaning we can move on to my next big destination. So, what we're going to do is return to the truck wreckage, which I did want to tank for this very useful reason, so we can get back up to this side of the map nice and easy. But this time, we're not heading into the swamp, we're heading up the hill. Okay, just follow the road uh, towards the cathedral. Oh. Okay. I was literally about to say, well, everything should be fine here. Ah. Just a couple of ghouls around the graveyard. Nothing too major. Okay, Roma, no problem whatsoever. You just get over towards me. Nice double tap. That's more like it. And there we go. Free reload. We got one more coming in. That's a swamp ghoul. The squishiest ghoul of all. That's not a problem. So we just need to wait for... Okay, we're just gonna... How did you survive that? Okay, well, you're dead now. How are we doing? Back to hidden. Good. These guys can actually drop money... Good source of money in a DLC where there's not a huge supply of it, really. Okay. Just keep on keeping on here. Watch out for the bad things. I think I see another Roma in the distance. The only thing to avoid is Reavers. Because uh, if you've not played much Fallout 3 and you're only familiar with Reavers from Fallout 4, yeah, Fallout 4 Reavers were no big deal. Fallout 3 Reavers were unstoppable murder machines, so uh, you didn't want to run into them. Couple of shots for you. All oh, that critical. You gotta shoot them in the head, as the saying goes. Uh-oh. I suspect there may be more trouble coming. Okay. That's swamp. That's also swamp. Okay, I might be about to be swamped by swamp ghouls, but honestly, that's... That's kind of fine. If they want to come, oh, I've reached the edge of the map by mistake. Okay, that's fine. You've sort of 
decomposed uh, by virtue of spending too much time in the swamp. So, uh, one good headshot will take care of you. Uh, your aroma, which is, oh, aromas are more problematic, actually. Aromas are more problematic. Aromas are more problematic. Okay, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take out him and then we're going to back... Oh, I'm about to die, actually. Okay, now is a good time for the Chinese assault rifle. This is a slightly excessively large number of ghouls, to be honest. Okay, you're dead. Now we just go for the headshot, some nice burst damage, and we hope for a critical. And we didn't... Oh, sure, there's more of them. Sure, why not? Why shouldn't there be more of them? You can just die, by the way. Did you just both die? Am I about to... No, I'm still in danger, obviously. I don't know what from, but something. Swamp ghouls can just naff off. I was trying to avoid all of you and... Okay, didn't even manage to finish it off. There we go, second burst. Beautiful shot of the head exploding there. Good. Are we done? Good, we're done. The one honestly, having cleared out 90% of the ghouls, I may as well just, you know, go and claim the actual cathedral as my own at this point. No, no, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, please. There you go. Now you don't have a face anymore. Here we go, Cathedral discovered. Don't have the key just yet, but that's fine. It's already tagged. And yeah, we couldn't get in here yet regardless, so it doesn't matter. Though there is one lovely refined Punga plant right there. Basically a Punga, but better. Bit more healing, bit more rad reduction, if I recall correctly. Here we go. Start making our way down the cliff right here. There's a lovely boat. You can drop down onto. There are some mile lurks about, but they're struggling to uh, find their way to me. This is the old sea tub, isn't it? So, uh, well, this is a bit of a drop there, to be honest. Is that okay? That's just okay. Good. That actually gets me, uh, yeah, access to the sea cave, but I do need a key for that. Still, good that it's already been tagged. Nice to have that being done. I've just been spotted. By a mile oak. Time to get out of here. Now we just back off because they're going to really struggle with water. Because mile oaks actually can't attack you while they're swimming. They've got no animation for it. So you can just go up to one while it's swimming and yeah, there's there's nothing it can do. We can just be best friends. This is the most hilarious thing about mile oaks. They're water-based creatures that can't actually um do anything in water, which is great. So I'd say that means we probably want to completely ignore the Myalurks if they want to swim after me. That's a thing they can do. I don't really care. We instead want to get around here to the coastal grotto. There we go. Think I see that up there. Lovely. Right. All I need to do is get out of the water and then basically just get into the door before those bastards can climb the cliff, which they're very bad at doing. And there we go. Coastal Grotto, in we go. So, this was the place that was described to me by Tobar when I arrived. The thing that I can do if I fancy a bit of hunting. Oh, he's panicking. No, Plick. Plick, I wouldn't recommend running outside, to be honest. Plick, don't do it. You okay, Plick? There we go, he's calmed down. Good, good, good. So, he runs a safari. You and some friendly NPCs just have to take out ghouls together. If you succeed, you get yourself a handful of XP. And for some reason, you pay for the privilege of letting this guy release ghouls at you. Which feels odd, but whatever. That's not really the main reason I came here, though. The main reason I came here is... Uh, here we go. Plix Journal. If we take that and read it, because yes, he's got some interesting insights pertaining to hunting and fighting ghouls, because he's been observing it happen a lot... Then we actually get ourselves, uh, there we go, the specific weaknesses of ghouls uh, and gain plus five damage bonus when attacking one. Now, uh, there's a small problem with that, which is this perk is absolutely broken and Bethesda never fixed it. You see, while this perk may say plus five damage when attacking a ghoul, actually, it applies to literally everything. Plus five damage with every shot. When you're attacking with an assault weapon, those fire in bursts. So that's plus five damage to each individual shot. So in a three round VATS burst, that's plus 15 damage, which is uh, not nothing. Not nothing at all. And uh, yeah, the game's actually acknowledging it because those numbers are definitely uh, higher than they were just a second ago. So uh, basically, it's just a massive upgrade for literally everything. It's great. Welcome 
Welcome to my extraordinary safari. Shall we get you registered? He's such a showman, I do like Plek. Only the finest bit of sport you've ever enjoyed. Once we review the rules and see to a nominal thousand caps registration fee, of course. It's such a flipping massive con, but you're not even the only person in there. Two other people have decided they want to do it too. As if like, you know, there's some massive shortage of ghouls to shoot everywhere across post-apocalypse America, which there's not. They are literally everywhere. Just, you know, walk into a random ruin, point your gun in a direction, shoot, there's a decent chance you'll hit a ghoul. I've found that price keeps the riffraff out. You aren't riffraff now, are you? Oh, such a smooth con man. I'll remotely release a group of ferals against which you must defend yourself. Don't worry. I'll make sure there aren't too many loose at one time. You're in for quite a treat, if I do say so myself. He says this, but most of the time your AI friends do end up dead before the end of it. And Jess, what happens if we get overwhelmed? Not an option, I'm afraid. The thrill wouldn't be the same if you knew I'd release you at the first sign of trouble, now would it? Yeah, he's just gonna let us die. And here we go into the place and we got ourselves a swamp, swamp, swamp. Okay, swamps, not so much trouble, but uh, yeah, watch out, oh hang on. Yeah, my rad meter's a bit on the high side right now, so uh, just for safety. Do a bit of rad X, do a bit of rad away, there we go, get my rad meter right down here. So, uh, when we say safari, yeah, it's more of a horde thing, and there's a couple of people here as well. Let me speak to you, by the way. I can't remember if you've got anything to say. So you're number three. Well, let's get this thing going. So there's Rip Smithy, and also, you showed up without any flipping armor, you mad bastard. Mr. Flick's really outdone himself this time. Okay, so we got ourselves a couple of, you know, uh, returning folks here. So yeah, you're on a little... Uh, Island. There's an area down below. I can't remember how many angles these guys actually come from, but yeah, there's clearly going to be something going on over here. Okay, there's. Oh! There were also traps. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, we should rearm that, by the way. I don't have repair enough to do that. Good! Good, good, good. Hang on. I might well do, actually. Do I still have the workman's coveralls? There we go. Rearm trap, beautiful. But you know, don't forget to actually put armor back on. Armor's important. Maybe heal yourself too. That's a good idea as well. Yeah, I can't remember exactly how this goes, but I'm going to reinforce our defenses just for safety. I'm going to slap down a handful of extra mines. And I'm also going to mine up the bridge. And yeah, they'll be totally coming from this direction too, because uh, there's traps over here. So they'll be dropping down off this ledge. So I'm going to put some extra mines there too. Okay, we've got a good handful of mines here. I don't know whether they're coming from uh, below or not. I mean, I feel like they might. Just in case, let's just drop a couple of mines uh, down over here. I mean, uh, what's a mine for if not a scenario where enemies are going to be coming for you when you're trapped in a fixed location mines. and they're going to be trying to swarm you? You know what? Got some mines down. Uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, so we've activated this and... Uh, Okay, I see some guys coming in. One of them's immediately exploded. And two more coming in. And uh, yeah, I see ya. I see ya. Boom. And okay, you've taken care of these guys. Oh, okay, so my friend's already under attack. Good, 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 good. I'm going to go for the full strength one. You work on the one who's already wounded. One good shot to the head. We'll finish him off. I think my friends might already be dead. <laughs> I think the guy who didn't bother wearing armor's already done. Uh, no, he's fine. He's fine. There's a couple over there. Okay, so you were already... Yeah, you're fine. Go for one shot. Boom! Oh, that's a nice shot. That's a drama angle right there. Reload. And... Uh, do I have enough for a shot here? I've probably got enough for one shot. You are behind that guy. Rip Smith, he's in trouble. You're not doing so hot. And... Okay, I want to go for... Never mind, maybe that guy's dead or something. One shot right there. Yeah, he was already dead. Got to reload. You go down. How much more do we have here? You've taken you down. Another one coming in over here. Am I allowed to walk onto the bridge? I assume so. Oh, you're already almost dead, to be honest. But I'll gladly get the headshot. And, okay, wait. There we go. He's almost dead now. 
And, oh, you've dropped your gun. Pick your gun up. No, don't go into unarmed mode, you mad bastard. Okay, I'll take care of this guy. And you focus on the one to the middle. This doesn't last that long, but it is kind of fun and intense. I will give it. It's a good little setup. And I think there was another one behind me there. You're coming over there. He's got a lever action rifle. You're almost dead. And if you can keep all your teammates alive, that's kind of fun, by the way. He goes down. How are we doing? Okay. I mean, the guy with no armor is still alive, which is impressive, quite frankly. One headshot knocks you down. Plenty of XP here. Ripsmith he is. Okay, there we flipping go. So we all survived. Hooray for us. And also, I might just go and reclaim my mines down here. That appear to have... Uh, nope, those did explode. Uh, something tried to ambush me from down here. Two things, in fact, and uh, red pass card. I can't remember what you do, but I'm pretty sure it's nothing to do with uh, this actual area. I think that's just something that can be used somewhere in the subway system. So hello there, Mr. Plick. I've survived your safari. Tremendous showing. I do hope the experience was worth every cap. Let's commemorate your first safari with a token of our friendship, shall we? This axe was uh, misplaced by one of my other patrons. She won't be needing it anymore. And it's a weapon of gruesome distinction. Enjoy it. And that there is the Dismemberer, the unique variant of the axe. And yes, Fallout 3, very not generous when it came to XP for quests. So a thousand caps and plenty of dead ghouls and ammo used up to kill them. Only a hundred XP base. Fallout 3 gave you very little XP for actually, you know, completing quests. And uh, I can't remember, can you actually repeat this? Your enthusiasm is flattering, but I'll need time to round up more fodder. Could I trouble you to return in a day or two? Yes, indeed you can, though I'm guessing he's going to gouge you for another thousand caps if you do. Right, pop to Radex and back outside, so I'm a bit worried there might be some, uh, yeah, some Milox waiting for me. That's kind of okay, I just want to get down into the water as fast as possible. Actually, if we're lucky, no, there's one up ahead of me too. That's fine, honestly, I don't want to take them out because it's a massive waste of ammo to even bother. So, uh, hello, yep, I know, I know, I know, I'm here, I'm invading your territory, diddly diddly day. That's absolutely fine, I'm swimming in Radix and Radaway, so I'm just gonna swim round the coast because, uh, yeah, water, very generous, next to how it is in Fallout 4. Now, admittedly, I might need to, oh, I think there was another one underneath the water right there, lovely, possibly that was just a fish, actually. There's another one over there because, uh, there's a location I do need to, uh, go and visit, here we go, there's a boat out here. That seems a little bit unassuming, but actually it's the site I want to point lookouts. Not really that numerous quests, so uh, may as well activate it while we're passing by. How many Milo's are following me, by the way? Hang on, there's... There's you right there. Get right into the right position, and... Uh, yeah, I see you there. That's all fine. Right, you seem to be lagging a bit behind here. This here is going to be... The USS Ozymandias. Absolutely lovely. So, we just hop up onto here and very quickly nip inside. Though, hang on. Check the actual uh, thing first. There might be... Ooh, probably free stuff. Absolutely nothing of any value whatsoever. Won't say no to some Mentats, though. And... Okay, the Milo seems to have lost me too. Better and better. Into the below decks. Where everything's a little bit, you know, sideways. Because the boat sort of crashed a bit. And also it's a bit radioactive. So, this here is the site of a science experiment that got itself a bit abandoned. Together with some free stuff right here. Lovely. Watch out for the, uh, the water. Safe is, uh, yeah, that needs a key. Instead, just activate the terminal here to figure out what's going on. So, uh, there's an error message. Lovely. So, confidential, null, etc. No, no, let's not skip to that. Let's just actually, you know, get ourselves the basic stuff here. So, uh, this is a natural gas survey project, trying to figure out whether this place might be good for a bit of natural gas mining. But to complete the survey, and thus the mission, you need to go around and pick up some soil samples. So yeah, find site 1, 2, and 3. That'll actually let you access these various bits and pieces. But, as we say, an error message. Code blue, we believe Saunders has made contact, corruption, academic contact. 
wire communication report that Saunders is attempting to something lie concentration associated with the decomposed corruption. Enact code blue protocol, leave no evidence. So something was a bit wrong here. On behalf of the company, thank you for accepting this contract. You'll be posing as a research intern, reporting to principal geologist Caroline Saunders. Her experience with wetland excavation makes her the only real suitable candidate. However, she is a known liberal with academic ties. We have only recently acquired excavation rights in this area. We believe that the mass burials of the American Civil War in this region have made the soil ripe for our purposes. This is the very same reason we're apprehensive about Saunders' liberal leanings. Your primary mission is to prevent Saunders from discovering the link between Point Lookout's bloody past and its probable richness in natural biogas resources. Code blue protocols are authorised per your discretion. Saunders must be prevented from hampering this resource at every cost. So uh, they wanted her to find the gas, but if she discovered why the gas was there, she might be uh, got rid of. Despite being a very small quest, by the way, it's arguably one of the most difficult in the game because obviously uh, we're going after biogas which means we need to go into the swamp that's kind of spewing out all of those bubbles, meaning uh, this is actually the only quest that really forces you to go uh, deep into the swamp, which is uh, a bad place to be. Going into the swamp, bad idea. So uh, we'll see. We'll see if we want to do that. For now, though, I'd say back up to the surface and, uh, if I can, immediately get out of here. And yes, indeed, I can just teleport straight out. Beautiful. Because I would say, now we've got ourselves a decent quality backwater rifle, 38 damage off my current gun skill, thanks to Ghoul Ecology being completely flipping broken, I would say we're ready to take on what's supposed to be the first mission of the DLC. The mansion that's being attacked by tribals who are not fun. They're not fun either. Remember how I mentioned that swamp folk do bonus damage to you? Yeah, so do tribals. 35 damage that your armor has no impact on whatsoever. They can just flipping murder you. But now I've got a really powerful shotgun, really powerful rifle, Chinese assault rifle, all the rest of it. I've got a chance. I've got a flipping chance. So, uh, next week, ladies and gentlemen, we will be trying to take over the mansion. We might go and see if we can visit some of those natural gas locations uh, while I'm passing through as well. But that's going to mean a reunion uh, with the Swamp Folk, who last time, uh, yeah, we did a lot of uh, running away and screaming from. So join me next week for even more running away and even more screaming, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout 3 with Point Lookout. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Oh, Timmy, it gets much worse yet. Because your dad's also dead. Garden gnome, go! Yes! Come back and accept your inevitable gnoming. Dance with your dad, Timmy. Dance with your dad. Gnomed! Oh, I've emancipated his limbs from the rest of him.